Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the Session 1 Personal Feedback presentation, Jesus gives personal feedback regarding terror of taking loving actions and the false beliefs that drive this state, and believes that we must earn love and how that prevents the flow of God's love. Recorded on the 21st of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Let's use the mic and we'll start. So, so what we're doing is a couple of feedback sessions, both of them be quite short, uh, both probably less than 10 minutes or 12 minutes long, hopefully. I, I, I've, lost my, I've lost my little watch though, because we've moved our thing. If you can just stay with it around so I can see it on the ground there somewhere. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. It's my wristwatch. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So what what we're going to do basically is uh, basically just give a little bit of feedback to Lani. She was going to read out what she what the question that she's raised in in her what she wants some feedback about, and then we'll just have a short discussion. Yeah. Okay. The question is: I feel a huge gulf between where I am and where I want to be. Mm. Fear of really embracing change and terror of taking action that love would direct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're noticing there is a gap between, you, like you do, you can feel within yourself some aspirations. Yeah, yeah, yes, definitely. To, and, I, and you need to use a mic. Yes, my, and, whole, my whole life has been aspiration. Yeah, and I feel, I feel that your aspirations yeah. are sincere for sure. But you're noticing that there's a gap between um, where you are and what you're choosing to do and what you hope you're choosing to do. They seem to be completely opposite. Yeah, and that's the, that's the difference between what's going on in your head mm. and also what, and the other emotions that are driving you from the heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. The yeah. prime emotion, as you know, driving you from the heart is fear. Yeah. Like you, it's your God. Yeah. Yeah, so you have a similar problem. Remember earlier today I was talking to Laura. Was where is Laura? Yeah, to remember yeah. to Laura, and I was just saying to Laura how fear is fear is the thing that she's spending all of her life trying to avoid feeling, and you're you're pretty much doing the same thing. So, so what are the justifications that you have for doing it? So you, you remember the false belief. What's the false beliefs that you have about fear? Uh, that it's just so automatic. It just takes me over and freezes me. And it's not automatic. Mm, okay. Mm. So I'm choosing that. Yes, there's a choice there. Um, you see, when, you say, when I say it's not automatic, what I mean by that is that, is that there is a moment where a decision can be made. And you're skipping over the moment where the decision can be made automatically without noticing the moment of decision. Now you know that's the case because recently you've had some experiences where, where you've had a choice to do something that yes. could have been positive, yes. you chose against it and then the door closed and it didn't open again and, then, yes. and you feel like you've then lost the opportunity yes. potenti potentially forever, right, you, yeah. is the feeling that you have. Because it was telling me um, actions to take that were so out of my comfort zone. Yes. I was like, I can't do that. Yes. No. And I just shut the door. Like. So it's the I can't do that. That is the actual, that's the mental belief. I can't do it. Like, so it's a bit like, remember earlier we were talking to Kate, it was, wasn't it? About, about she's feeling she can't cope with emotion. Your viewpoint is when you're challenged with something that you're afraid of doing, you instantly go, I can't do that. Yeah. And, and instead of going, well, well, what does God feel about this? What does God feel about that? Well, you can do anything, mm. okay, yeah? yes. and particularly something that's in harmony with love, you definitely would want to do. Yes. Um, so that's what God's truth is. Your truth is you can't do it for whatever personal reason you have. Most of it is mostly, though, just because it will trigger some fear in you, right, yes. that you really don't want to feel. Yeah. So your investment is to not feel fear. Yeah. That's your investment. Yeah. Okay, so, so what do you do about that investment? You're allowed to not feel fear. 
but but as you've seen recently every time you choose to not feel fear and instead and instead you know live in it you make decisions that you then regret yeah now the so the choice now becomes are you going to continue making decisions you regret or are you going to make a different choice with your fear yeah it's kind of come to crunch time like i can't keep going i've been doing this like a bit closer life. i've been doing this my whole life and i just can't keep keep doing it yeah yeah so it's and yet to feel the fear like i can lie and shake and things like that but then still well one thing about fear that most people don't realize is that is unless you take the action you probably are not going to feel the fear related to the action do you understand that yeah so so what that means is, and you'll see this uh, in the next few days when we talk about fear and how to address fear and and why people don't take action but but the main reason why people don't take action is because they're usually afraid of taking action and and if you don't take action the irony is that the f particular fear that's causing you to not take action will never be experienced so the secret to experiencing fear is to take the action you're afraid of. So there could be a different fear for each different action. Yes, yes. So if I can give you some examples from my own uh, life, uh, one thing I was really, really afraid of was was going into anything to do with a supermarket or a shop or anything like that. Like I just, I hated it. I'd sit in the car. Yeah, if I could, if I could get somebody else doing it for me, I would. Right. And then I decided it was a problem because I was obviously terrified. So what I decided to do was to spend two times a week um, where I would go and actually be in a shopping centre, uh, uh, not to purchase anything. I just had to be in the shopping centre. It was the biggest shopping. I chose the biggest shopping centre in South Australia to do it. And I had to be in the shopping centre for four hours straight. Right. And just feel what I felt. Does that make sense? Yes. And and during that I learned that actually I, there was a lot of things that I there was a lot of fears that came up. There were fears about people looking at me and judgment. There were fears about um, not being able to say what I wanted to assistance. You know, if I was buying something, there were fears about looking stupid. There were there were fears even about spirits in, in, involving with people and staring at me because that's been a problem all my life. Where where I've always had a problem where people look at me and really check me out, whereas I don't see them doing that with everybody else, but they really do it with me all the time. Where I'll have, like I walk into a pub and, and every single person in the pub will look at me. Every single person. And they don't, like I haven't made a noise walking in or anything. They just all look at me and they all look at me and like look at me and look at me and then they roll their eyes or nose or whatever and then they get back to what they were doing. And this has been a, one of the reasons why I avoided that as well. And, th and so I went through all those emotions while I was there. So you consciously chose to feel each one as it came up? and When you say consciously chose, uh, they automatically come up yeah. if you let them. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to consciously choose anything. Yeah. They just automatically come up. The key is for you to let them. You see, and this is what I notice most people doing is they don't let them. So, so, so the way to confront your fear is quite simple. You do the thing you're afraid of doing, if it, particularly if you know it's in harmony with love and truth. And most of the time, mo a lot of the things we're afraid of doing are in harmony with love and truth. It seems to be the, the more in harmony with love and truth, the Exa more afraid I exactly. am of doing it. Exactly. And, and then let yourself feel the feelings you have while you're doing it. Okay, so I don't need to make the decision at that time, I just need to just feel the fear. And when you say make the decision, you need to go and do, you need to decide you, the way, where your will is being used is you, you're deciding to do the thing that you're afraid of doing. Mm, okay. And that, that requires your will, that yeah. requires your desire to address this particular issue properly. Mm. You see, see, if you keep saying, no, I can't, I can't cope, yeah. there's your excuse. There's your excuse that helps you with the investment. I can't deal with the fear as an emotion. Yes. That's, that's the investment. I don't want to deal with fear as an emotion. And the excuse is, I can't deal with fear. I can't deal with fear. Anything that makes me afraid, I've just run away from. Mm -hmm. So stop running away from them. Yeah. Stop running away from it. So even in a group like this, where you feel afraid of approaching someone, go and approach them. Mm -hmm. 
Do you see what I'm saying? You, you do the opposite of what the fear is dictating yeah. and you let yourself feel as you're doing it. Right? Yeah. That's the second secret to it. Yeah. Let yourself feel it as you're doing it. Most people try to feel it all beforehand. You follow? But, but the problem with doing that is you're just guessing how you're going to feel. Yeah, you're imagining <coughs> what, the, uh, what it's going to be like and it's, yeah. it's never like that anymore. No, no, that's right. Yeah. So if you think about it even before, even how you felt coming up here in the front, yeah. that's a fear, right? The fact that you're now doing it, the key now, but I don't know if you've noticed, you've locked up your whole body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so, just, just you, so now just relax <laughs> and breathe because breathing keeps the emotion flowing in your body and you're here. Does that make sense? You're here doing it. Yeah, and it feels quite good actually. It's not too bad, is it, right? <laughs> no, it's so not, it's not as bad as what you thought. <laughs> no. You don't really notice them out there at all, do you, really? And, uh, and, and it's not a problem, right? Yeah. Because you get engaged in the conversation and so forth. So it's, it's the way it is. And, and this is what you need to do. But see, you notice what you tend to do is you tend to heavy yourself through it and really lock yourself up when you're doing it. Yeah, which so then creates back problems and... Well, of course, it's going muscle to create problems. muscle cramps and all sorts of problems. Yeah. Uh, you need to breathe while you're experiencing the thing, right? And you need to remember that every time you're not breathing while you're experiencing it, you're purposely just oh. rigidly trying to control the experience of the fear. You and follow? I think that's exactly what happens. I think that breathing just stops. <laughs> This is a this is a, something you need to learn to yes. keep just keep breathing, keep breathing, yeah. and keep diaphragmatically breathing. You know, into into your tummy rather than into just into your chest. Yeah. Uh, what I see a lot of fe fear people who with a lot of fear just breathe in their chest. They don't breathe into their diaphragm at all. The key is to breathe into your diaphragm and in stay engaged. And breathing will help you stay engaged emotionally in the process. Mm. You follow me? Yeah. And 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 you do that. You do that every time the f a fear appears every time so what that means is so when you start if you're very afraid when you start it's it's very confronting right because you're now doing it you know in the course of a day there might be 20 things you're afraid of and you're now choosing to do exactly the opposite every single time and breathe and feel why you do it and you just do that all the time mm -hmm. and you pray like i pray while I, while that's happening as well mm -hmm. And just like you know, just to stay in the moment, stay connected, stay feeling, stay breathing, stay you know not worrying too much about what's going on externally, but just focus on what the internal emotions are. Mm, I reckon if I could spend each day doing that, mm. it would be a huge help. Yeah, the issue you have is that you've sort of cho you at this stage you've chosen you've basically said to yourself that your fear is something you just desperately do not wish to feel at all. Yeah. And so what you're trying to do is avoid your fear every moment of the day. And this is not good for you because it actually creates uh, also a lot of inner turmoil. Yeah. And, um, and, and also it causes you to make choices and decisions that are completely out of harmony with, with love and truth, with regard to love of yourself yeah. in particular. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm. So, so that'd be my suggestion. Remember that you're, you're saying that you can't feel fear. There's your... your intellectual justification yeah. that's your belief all right and where it comes from doesn't really matter that's the belief you have yeah. it needs to be deconstructed the way the way you've got to tell yourself god's truth which is you you can feel fear you you can you can do thing you can do anything you wish and feel the fear while you're doing it right and then you've got to see that all of the, the intellectual belief that you've created is just a justification to not feel fear and the way to address fear is quite simple take the action you're afraid of if it's loving and truthful as far as you're aware take the action you're afraid of every single time yeah that's the thing. <laughs> it's every single time every, and and even go looking for opportunities Yes, well, you know what you're afraid of. Yeah. So you can easily go and create opportunities to deal with that particular fear. So it's like a person who's afraid of public speaking. The yeah. obvious thing to do is to, to join a group which does public speaking yes. and, and then work your way through the fears that way, isn't it? That's the obvious yes. thing to do. Yes. So it's the same like if you're afraid here at the, uh, at the resort to go swimming, go swimming. 
like and your fear might be because of how your body looks or how you know how you what clothes you're wearing when you're swimming and all these kind of things and it could be all sorts of things that come up as a result stay breathing feel the feelings go swimming even though you feel like you shouldn't go swimming you know don't sit at home watching the telly as a as an alternative one of my greatest fears is i really wish to um, be involved in sharing god's truth mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. and that just freaks me out like yep. i'm some i'm small i'm tiny just get back to where you belong you know? yeah but see again that's the the other beliefs you tell yourself mm -hmm. or spirits who are with you tell you to keep you under control either way it doesn't really matter they're false beliefs yeah. the true thing that god wants you to do is definitely wants you to share truth with the world right so that's yeah. god's god's feelings so so what is your investment in telling yourself that you're small and that you you won't be able to do it and what and what you know what's the well, problem i won't have to feel my fear about doing that yeah you won't have to be exposed you might have to be attacked you know there's all sorts of things that might happen if yeah. you do it and, and all sorts of things you're afraid of yeah. that might happen if you do it that's why you're not doing it yeah. so what you do instead of that is you do it like, don't you think that sometimes I get afraid, like there's people all over the world that like to slit my throat, you know, sometimes I get afraid yeah. about that, but yeah. I still go ahead and do it, Yeah. right? So, so when you go ahead and do it, you, you find the fear will come up, you keep breathing, and, and that's the way to handle fear. And if you keep doing that, you will then eventually get to the point where you have sort of episodes of fear without even doing anything, and that will release more fear and so forth until it's done. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. and that's the how to handle fear. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> now she's afraid of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, where do I start? <laughs> yeah, well, what I would do, uh, what I did was made a list of everything I was afraid of. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and then I looked at my life from a practical perspective and, and examined how or what I could do in every single case to trigger or, or not to trigger the fear but just to be in the situation i was afraid of and let myself feel what i whatever i felt some of the things were quite strange you know like sometimes i felt shame or sometimes i felt some other emotion rather than rather than what i expected so and that's what you've got to do you've got to let yourself feel whatever it is there and breathing is the secret there yeah yeah okay no yeah. worries thank you <laughs> thank thanks you. thank you thank you and next, <coughs> our next person is Elvira, so she's going to quickly replace Lani. And we might just need to just check that camera for because Elvira is a bit taller than Lani. <laughs> Can you remember your question? Yep. No. That's because it's a close-up. <laughs> oh my God, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> Look at her on the camera, it's shocking. I even avoid having my photo taken. So. Yeah, actually it's interesting because uh, Elvira was one of the people who used to email us saying, you put me in your camera take and you've got to take me out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And here she is sitting on the front. <laughs> what's, the, what's the irony of that? <laughs> it's, it's progress. Yeah. Okay, so, my question so let's I look at your it. question. Yeah. Um, I've heard you say hundreds, maybe even thousands of times that love is a gift. Yep. And in my heart, I absolutely do not believe in that. I feel like love has to be earned. Yeah. And I feel like... I feel like it's never going to be possible for me because I can't get anything right. I can never be good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And it's my really big block to God. I feel like it, it is. I feel like a dog chasing its tail, trying to be good enough for God to love me, and yep. I could I could spend the next thousand years doing that. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're never going to be good enough for God to love you, actually. Do you understand what I said? <laughs> no. Well, I'm not good enough for God to love me either. The point is that none of us 
can ever be good enough for anybody to love us. They will love us whether we're good or not. You understand? Whether you're good or not, somebody either chooses to love you or chooses to not love you. That's their choice. And it's got nothing to do with what you do. A person can love you no matter how bad you are. You know, God loves people right in the hills and they, they are not good people and God still loves them. I know it just feels like words to me when you say that. Yep. Well, let's, let's just go through it emotionally. So your belief system is that you have to earn love. Isn't yep. that true? Yep. That's the belief system. You, you, that's the false belief system that you, you, you actually believe it's possible to earn love. Otherwise, you wouldn't be trying to earn love. You follow me? Oh, yeah. You, so you must believe it's possible to earn love. But, but the circumstances under which it's possible in your mind are you have to be perfect and then you'll have earned love. Yeah. Isn't that the case? Yeah. yeah. But you believe it's possible to earn love. That's the false belief. You follow me? Yeah. And the, the truth from God's perspective is it's completely impossible to earn love from anyone. You can't earn love at all. There's nothing you can do to get loved. Love is a choice on their part, not on yours. So there's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can say, there's nothing you can be that's going to make somebody love you. They will love you no matter what you are. You follow? That's the true belief. So your false belief is, I have to earn love, and if I don't earn love, I have, if I'm not perfect, I won't have love. The true belief is, from God's perspective, is nobody can earn love. A person will be loved when somebody chooses to love them, and God chooses to love you, even though you don't feel that. And you're not feeling it because you think you have to earn it. That's why you're not feeling it. You, you reject God's love because you think you haven't earned it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you believe the only way to earn it is by being perfect. And you're not perfect, so therefore you haven't earned it. So therefore you have to reject God's love in order for your entire psychological state to me remain. You follow? And your psychological state or your psychological belief is, this false belief, is I have to earn love, then I'll get love. But to earn love, I've got to be perfect. And then you're worried now because I've told you basically that you can't get perfect without getting God's love. <laughs> so there's a problem there. But, but No, I've thought that. Right. That, that's the conundrum. Like, that's oh, right. I, I've, oh, I talk to God all the time and mm -hmm. I lie down and I think, all right, God, you know, I do that the experiment. And then sometimes I feel like this lightness happen around me. Mm -hmm. But then it's like I clench. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to receive God's love. You yeah. don't. So, so, so having to earn God's love is a justification for not receiving God's love. You follow me? Can you say that again? Having to earn God's love, the belief that you have to earn God's love is your investment. And it covers over this feeling that, of what you're going to feel when you receive God's love. What do you think you're going to feel when you receive God's love? You imagine yourself receiving God's love, what do you think you're going to feel? Because that's what you're trying to prevent. You see what I'm saying? I think I would feel confused. Why? It's like it's like whenever you and Mary have given me any any positive feedback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find it more challenging than when you've given me hard feedback. I know. Because... Why? I don't know. It, it's quite easy to see why, if you let yourself look at it. What do you feel, what do you feel when you get positive feedback? I feel like I must have somehow tricked the person into thinking that there's something good. So you feel guilty? I don't know. I've 
haven't even thought of it that way. But what, what do you really feel? Just let yourself feel like wherever we've given you positive feedback, what have you felt? Well, you say confused, but underneath that, there's feelings that you. I don't know. I, I've thought about that so many times, and like I, I think, I think I always think, oh, wouldn't it be great to get some positive feedback? And then I do, <laughs> and <laughs> and, I, and then I sit there and I think you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> like in Mergen, like I came back and I thought, oh, the, the, these, what am I doing? These people can't be Jesus and Mary. Like, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, I could feel what you feel, but I don't <laughs> know if I want to say what you feel while you're not feeling what you feel. You see what I'm saying? Like, I feel that it's very important that a, pe a person is able to see and feel their own feelings. So, so let's if we if we look at it so far, what we've covered is this: you have a false belief that you have to earn, that you can, you believe you can earn love. That's your false belief. You believe it's possible to earn love. Yeah. Right? And the true belief is it's not possible to earn love. Love is either given or not, depending on the person who gives it. It's got nothing to do with the person who receives it. Like if I love you, it's got I nothing. I don't feel worth it. That's what I'm feeling. No, that's not what you're feeling. That's what your belief is. Mm. It's not well, what you're I feel, feeling. I feel useless. Like. When somebody gives you love, what do you feel? You feel an immense amount of grief when somebody gives you love. Don't you? Right? And that, that pain, which is resulting from all the times you haven't been loved, you don't want to feel it. Do you see what I'm saying? So that, that's where you are now, it's feeling some of the grief that you have when you're loved. You tie, you tie, as soon as I talk about this grief that you have about being loved, you tighten up and just freeze up, right? You, you're so afraid of being loved. Right? And so what you need to do is allow yourself to be loved Right, and just cry, just let yourself feel this grief. But what's happened is that you, you feel this grief is too much for you to feel. And so what you do is you tell yourself a belief. A belief is that you, sh you haven't earned the love, and so you shouldn't be allowed to receive it. You see? And that, that's where your false belief comes from. You're telling yourself you haven't earned it, and so you shouldn't receive it. But why am I wanting love if I don't want to feel it? Well, the reality is everybody wants love, but a lot of us don't want it when it's going to trigger a whole heap of grief in us, a whole heap of painful emotion. And the problem for many of us is we've had a life where we haven't been loved very much at all. So when somebody does actually love us, there's a huge amount of, of grief-based emotion that gets triggered automatically, right, when somebody loves us and you're unwilling to feel it. Do you follow? And so you've had to tell yourself that you haven't earned it, so therefore you should reject it. That's what you're doing. And, and your rejection of love is to control your grief. That's its purpose. So you're rejecting love in order to control grief. You follow? And, and this is a common problem, because particularly with people that haven't been loved for most of their life, and then all of a sudden somebody comes along and loves them. It's almost like the person they want to get angry with is the person who's loving them because that person is triggering all of their grief about what's happened in their past. Do you follow? Yeah. And that's what you do. Yep. Okay. So the false belief is, that you, have to, that you can earn love, you believe you can, and that's false belief, you can't earn love. It doesn't matter what you do, how bad you are, how good you are, you can be perfect, not perfect, whatever, 
it doesn't mean you're going to get love. Because love is a gift that's given from the other person to you, so it's impossible for you to earn it. Love is a choice the other person makes. Do you follow me? Yeah. Now, God's already making the choice to love you, but you're making the choice to reject God's love because it triggers too much grief. Have I? Because a few times I have felt like when I'm in a sincere place mm -hmm. that I can feel like I'll ask God, oh, look, you know, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Can you please help me? Mm -hmm. And then... The you question know, you have is, have you felt some of God's love? Yeah. You actually felt some just here while we were sitting here. And then you went rigid and shut it down because it triggers too much grief. So the problem that you're facing is your acceptance of your own grief. That's the real problem you're facing here. The acceptance of the grief. The grief comes from the contrast between being loved and having never been loved in the past. Do you follow? That's where the contrast comes from. So all the times when I've sort of felt like, oh yes, you know, God helped me to go further into that grief, that's actually receiving God's love. A lot of times you are, uh, like, you, you're one of the few people of error who have changed quite a lot since I've known you, right? Um, and you don't think you have, but you actually have. I remember the first time I met you, you were a nasty person. <laughs> 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 you really were. <laughs> and... Uh, and you've, you've changed quite a lot, but, and so you have actually have received some of God's love, but your problem that you have... I'll just let Vera cry. She didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. The, the key issue you face is that just allowing this intense grief to let, let it overwhelm you, wash over you when, when it does, you know? That's the key thing, just like you're doing now. That's all you need to do, but just l really let it go, you know? Does that make sense? <laughs> but that's where the... So what I'm explaining to you... <laughs> I'll, I'll say this for Elvira for later, because you'll be able to... <laughs> you, darling, you can just go and have a cry, that's fine. And I'll just say it, and then you can, you, you'll hear it later. <laughs> all right? All right, Avira, you can actually go out if you want to. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, you will see. You'll see it. That's fine. Have a good cry. Let yourself have a good cry. <laughs> can you see what I was saying to Avira? She was trying to control her grief by telling herself that she can earn love. Right? When you tell yourself you can earn love, which is a false belief you're basically su suggesting to yourself that it's possible to earn love. And what I'm suggesting to her and, and to you as an audience is that it's actually impossible to earn love. You can't earn love from anyone. There's nothing you can do to actually get loved. Nothing you can do. Because it's the choice of the other person to love you. It's their choice. And they will either choose to love you or not. It depends completely... It depends completely on what they choose to do. Does that make sense? Now, in God's case, God chooses to love you. Right? And that's always the case. God's choosing to love you all the time. So what, what, what's happening for, for Elvira is God's choosing to love her, but she believes that she has to earn the love or even can earn the love, and she believes that because it helps her Avoid the grief between, uh, between the contrast of feeling some of God's love enter her and then feeling the contrast between that and how unloved she's been all of her life. Does that make sense? And that amount of grief that's there gets triggered every time she feels just a smidgen of God's love. Just gets triggered. And she wants to control it. So she tells herself she hasn't earned God's love and then she goes all rigid and shuts down reception of God's love. Right. And God can't give her more. God's trying to, but God can't give her more because she's shut it down. She's shut down the process. 
Does that make sense? So it's the same kind of cycle. So this is a cycle she's in. She keeps telling herself she's not worthy of receiving God's love, but she's actually telling herself that false belief over and over again because she believes that she can be worthy of God's love. And the reality is nobody can earn God's love just like nobody can earn anybody else's love. And if you believe you can earn somebody's love, well, you're just wrong. You can't. Uh, you can't. Many of you have tried, right, in relationships and so forth to earn somebody's love. Many of you try it with your parents on a daily basis, trying to get loved from them when they just don't want to love you. You're better off just accepting they don't love you. And the fast way of doing that is receiving some of God's love. And then you'll feel the contrast between the hurt of, uh, hurt of your, your parents not wanting you and the, the love that comes from God. And, and rather than shutting down that grief, feel it. Just let it, let it wash over you and really go for it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Well, uh, we've just got to do a couple of minute swap over with some cameras, which will take us probably two minutes or so, and then we'll get going with some group feedback, shall we? Good.